Welcome to the Bay Nets Countdown to November, a series of interviews with the candidates in the November 4th general election. I'm Dick Myers, and with me today for this segment is Matt Morgan, who's Republican candidate for a House of Delegates from District 29A. Morgan's opponent is Democrat Dan Slate. Great to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Nice to have you. Uh, tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm currently the lead technology specialist at the College of Southern Maryland. I'm a Hall of Fame realtor at Smart. And I'm a small business owner and some rental properties and uh, focus on um, real estate investment. You were born and raised in Southern Maryland, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Graduated from McDonough High School, grew up a few miles outside of La Plata. Um, parents owned a tobacco farm out there. Mm -hmm. So you ran four years ago. Uh, I guess this question would be more appropriate four years ago, but equally now. Why do you want to be a, a member of the House of Delegates? What, what about it appeals to you? And why do you think uh, your background and experience would help you in that regard? Well, I first got started in politics. Um, just wanted to get involved and try to do something to better the community and, and, and kind of straighten out um, the government in general. And got real involved in politics uh, 2008, 2009, and looking around at, you know, wanted to help different campaigns. I always thought my... My skill set was more of a, a back office type person, and I uh, just really couldn't find any campaigns to really eh, grab my attention and decided to be a, a front guy. So I um, went ahead and filed for uh, House of Delegates in 2010 against a very popular uh, Democrat, um, Delegate Woods, and um, gave him a very, very close race. But I ended up beating him on election day and lost to him in early voting and absentee ballots by 283 votes. Uh, closest state level race uh, of that year, um, you know, so be it, lost, you never like to lose, but it happens. So are you better uh, positioned this, this time around because of the, the mood of the electorate in Maryland? I don't know, to tell you the truth. Um, there was a, a lot of momentum because of the Tea Party in 2010 that really ginned up a Republican turnout. Um, so I can't tell. I know that um, I'm a better candidate than I was in 2010. I think we have a better organization. I've met more people. And um, I'm expecting a different result this time. So what's wrong with Maryland that you'd like to go to Annapolis and fix? Well, the most overwhelming problem in Maryland is, is the taxes. And, and really, it's bigger than this tax. It's this opportunity. I mean, Maryland's lost 6,500 businesses since the start of the recession. But just since the last election, we've lost over 3,400 businesses. And when you lose that many amount of businesses, it cuts back on opportunities for everybody. And now I start seeing friends and families uh, starting to move. It's, it's really eye-opening, and I'd like to do something about it. Is there one thing that's uh, over uh, glaringly wrong that is causing that that could be fixed and fixed uh, relatively easily? Well, it's the tax situation. It, it's you, we have over forty different tax increases in just the last like seven years, and it's almost from me going out and door knocking to, and, and talking to people. It's almost like a full fledged tax revolt that we're having here in Maryland. Um, businesses are closing. People are just fed up. And the solution coming out of Annapolis is just more of the same. Last year in the legislature, they pushed forward a, a per chicken tax. Um, they're talking about a VNT tax. And just last week, uh, Democratic Comptroller Peter Francho came out and said that we're expecting a 67% increase in property taxes. And that they looked for um, the Board of Public Works to, to push that as agenda this coming legislation, uh, this uh, legislation, legislative session. So whoever is elected is going to have to deal with this, and I think the public can trust it may to, to fight for it. Well, some would say that it's not all about taxes. It's about quality of life. It's about education. There's yes. a mix of things that it, uh, attracts businesses to a state and keeps them in a state, and that Maryland is superior in some of the other stuff to counterbalance the tax stuff. Um, you're right, we are superior, but education's a good point. Last year we spent more money as a state in education than we had in Maryland's 400 year history. We used to be the number one ranked school system in K-12 in the entire country. Now we're no longer. 
And two of the reasons for that is one of is a failed implementation of Common Core, and the other is poverty. The poverty rate's high. And I think we can address both those through increased education and not just like pouring, you know, um, money onto the situation. I think we need some outside the idea box ideas to, to kind of change things up. One of my ideas is actually having College of Southern Maryland be offered, be allowed to offer four-year degrees. That's a, a program that we would have to push through the legislature, and really the only thing stopping from doing that is being accredited. As a taxpayer, we've already paid a significant amount of money for an organization or institution like that, and I think it would benefit um, people to have another educational option. There are people that say it doesn't make any sense to elect a Republican to the legislature because you never can accomplish anything because of Democratic um, majority. Uh, what is your response to that? I don't think that's true. I mean, the day that I go up there, I'm going to be the, the 44th Republican elected um, with a personal relationship with a lot of the House leadership that's up there. My opponent would be the 96th Democrat elected. His party is the party of ones pushing the VMT tax, pushing the chicken tax, who's pushed 40 tax increases. Mine is the party that's, that's fought against that. Um, to say that we're not effective, I, I think you're shortchanging the Republican Party a little bit. You look at some legislation like uh, Jessica's Law, mandatory sentences for sex offenders. That is where Republican amendments, there's Republicans' reasons why that law was put in place. So elections have consequences. You look back to like 1994, which was an overwhelming Republican year. They elected 15 House of Delegate members into the state. It shook up the legislature so much they offered a 10% tax increase that or tax decrease that year. I assume that uh, you're assuming that there also will be a Republican governor. Yes, sir. Why do you, why do you support Mr. Hogan? I've known Mr. Hogan for the almost two going on three years. Larry's a great guy and he has a great plan to get Maryland back on track and I'm happy to uh, announce that he endorses me. And um, I think that would be the quickest way of turning Maryland around is obviously changing the governor. St. Mary's County has some infrastructure needs. Probably the most glaring would be roads and the most glaring of those would be uh, the Thomas Johnson Bridge. Um, how can we get that accomplished? Well, the first thing we need to do to accomplish that is is to keep the politicians' hands out of the lock uh, out of the transportation funds, and you accomplish that through lock boxes. Now we're going to have a vote on a constitutional amendment, which I do support. The problem with that constitutional amendment is that it only requires a three fifths vote, and every time they've raided the trans uh, transportation fund, they've already had a three fifths vote. So that's the reason why we need more Republicans elected. It's hard to accomplish any transportation thing from, you know, especially something as big as building a bridge when it'd be hard pressed to build a bus stop right now as long as the politicians are keep raiding the fund. Explain for our, to our audience what the lockbox is because uh, there hasn't been a lot of discussion about this constitutional amendment. There probably should be more. What would the, what would the amendment do? The, one, the amendment would um, only allow transfers out of the transportation fund um, for emer other than for purposes of transportation. It would only allow um, transfers out of that fund for emergency purposes, and it would have to be enacted by the governor or, 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 um, or the legislature's leadership. Um, so you could make it a political point, yes, if, if uh, you had to take money out of there for some you know, unknown reason, like to fill budget holes. Like the, right now, we're facing a four, four, uh, $405 billion structural deficit. To take money out of that, to, the governor would have to declare an emergency to be able to remove those funds. This is more of a local issue, but there could be some um, state impact on it, and that is uh, growth in uh, the northern part of St. Mary's County, which is the, the core of your district. Do you have any uh, thoughts about how that section of the county should grow, and particularly what roads might be needed to accommodate that? Well. The northern part of the district, Charlotte Hall area, is a designated uh, developmental district. So what I would think is a lot of the community even supports some of the commercial aspects of development out by, um, in Charlotte Hall, like where the McKay's is, and you know, it's, it's anyone that drives through Charlotte Hall can see that the patrons uh, definitely support the new Dairy Queen, 
in some of the restaurants out there. Um, what I've found is the, the pay, uh, constituents simply do not want um, townhouses, basically, and the overdevelopment that comes with that. So when it comes down to it, I, I side on, this, on the side of the residents. So that probably would be uh, a call to not uh, provide central water and sewer in that area for residential development? Well, right. I mean, we shouldn't be providing uh, res uh, water and sewer for, you know, on the taxpayer design to develop or upzone other people's property. Mm -hmm. yeah, that would be up to the developer. Now, um, there has been a lot of criticism of the Metropolitan Commission in St. Mary's County, and that would, uh, to change their... Uh, structure would require the legislature to do that. Uh, one of the options would be to uh, turn the Metropolitan Commission, uh, wrap it into county government. Would you be in favor of that move? Uh, no, no. As of right now, no. I wouldn't be a uh, favor of any move. I would like to find out why the Metropolitan Commission um, seemingly served the community well for like 50 plus years, but now there seems to be a bunch of issues. With it. I think a majority of those issues coming down to the Metropolitan um, is caused by unfunded state mandate and mandates on them. Um, but just to change their org chart up for the sake of changing it um, doesn't sound real appealing to me at this point. Okay. Um, this is your second campaign. I know you said that you had a better organization. For folks that would like to get involved in your campaign, uh, do you have a website and a Facebook page, and are there opportunities for uh, volunteerism uh, within your campaign? Sure. Uh, there's opportunities for myself and for our governor candidate, Larry Hogan. And if you go to my website, voteformattmorgan.com, um, there's a page to fill out there, or just simply send me an email. We can definitely put you to work, either door knocking, phone calls, and we do need help on covering polls on Election Day. So any time that you can put out, that would be much appreciated. Thank you. So um, I've seen you out at a lot of events. Do you enjoy the campaigning aspect of, of what you're doing? Sometimes, sometimes. It, it's always funny. Um, sometimes you, you, you go to an event that you wouldn't think you would necessarily have fun at, and you end up having a ball. Uh, other times, it's it is uh, it's more like a job. You are forcing yourself to go. But. I I know this has always been a campaign tactic, but it seems to be more prevalent this year of uh, going door to door, door knocking. Are you doing a lot of that? And what kinds of reactions are you getting? Yeah, we've done a lot of door to door, um, and it does seem like no one's done that in years prior. I, I did a, do a lot of door knocking in two thousand ten, and uh, to me, it's it's one of the best ways to figure out what's on each voter's mind and be accountable, um, direct voter contact. Um, it works for some people in other races where you're in a, like a commissioner where it's, uh, it's an entire county, it might be not, not be as effective just because of the amount of people that you need to physically lay hands on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very time consuming to go door knocking, Your district, we do a lot of it. Your district goes uh, how far south from St. Mary's County? It's from uh, Hollywood Leonardtown Road, okay. runs from you know, Hollywood to Leonardtown. Cuts the county basically in half, north St. Mary's up to the county line. Okay, great. Thank you very much for I being appreciate here. It. Appreciate you having me. Hey, thank you. And thank you for joining us today on Countdown to November.